Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. My name is Richard Betts, and I'm joined by Nicole Dines, Giles Barry, and Paul Strome. Um, Nicole, let's let's pick up with you. Um, what have you been following this week? Some uh, new numbers came out from RCA on the third quarter, and we've been talking a lot about how the year started with a bang, and the first quarter was incredibly positive, and then obviously there was a huge collapse in the second quarter because of the coronavirus crisis. But this uh, points out there was no pickup in the third quarter at all. In the third quarter, transactions in Europe fell 43% to 44 billion and transaction volumes for the whole year was down 19%. So that marked the downward trend in the third quarter. And uh, um, the usual uh, suspects, it says Tom Lee of RCA says there's a real division between sectors. Clearly, investors are interested in logistics, the big winner, as we know, while uh, they're holding out on uh, office, waiting for things to develop, while retail and hotels are particularly badly affected. There are some stark numbers, hotels in the third quarter down 56%. Well, retail held only 15%. But also another interesting thing that came out of the numbers is that even the German, you know, we've often talked about Germany surviving very well the, the crisis. The, in the third quarter, the residential sector, which has always been a strong point in Germany, has fallen 40%. So the crisis seems to be hitting uh, markets that were relatively resilient until now. We also had obviously a focus on Portugal this week in terms of some of the events. What did you pick up from that, Nicole? Yes, Portugal, um, very interesting market because obviously, again, the year started particularly well with record high numbers in the first quarter. And to this day, transaction volumes are close to historical highs, 2.3 billion, which is the third highest ever. So the market seems to be relatively resilient. But when you look closely at the numbers, A, there's marked slowdown expected in the last quarter. So for the end of the year, it won't go higher than 2.8 billion, so lower than the 3.3 uh, recorded last year, but also the fact that the market was very much skewed by two huge deals, the sale by Sony Sierra of the Sierra Prime portfolio of shopping centers to Allianz for 800 million euro, that's the Portuguese bit, uh, because it was a Spanish and, and Portuguese uh, sale, um, which is a huge number for, for the Portuguese market, which is relatively small. And the Lagoas Business Park sold for 421 million to Henderson Park. But looking ahead, uh, there's a lot of interest from investors. Uh, international investors are coming back. There's a definite flight to safety, which we've seen in other markets. Um, and one thing that came out is that family offices are being very active because what they have on their side are two crucial elements in this sort of uncertain market. They are cash rich and they're very agile and nimble so they can move much faster than big institutions. I was also interested by the discussion with Carlos Muedas, the, the former EU Commissioner for Research, Science and Innovation, um, who was just saying that real estate's path is digital and green, that there'll be a radical transformation in the next 10 years um, because in Europe there are 25 billion square metres that need adapting to become sustainable and energy efficient. Um, and he also said that one good thing about the pandemic, um, if you can say that, is is that it's, it's accelerated and, and forced the adoption of digital solutions and that the merging of digital and physical worlds has become inevitable now. Um, and in 10 years time, his view was that we'll realise how beneficial that was. You appreciate the digital, but at the same time, the physical experience is more valued and prized. And I think that was interesting. And that, that whole session is well worth catching up with. Uh, Giles, what, what have you been seeing? Well, it's been- been a really interesting week again on the offices front Richard the Urban Land Institute and EY put out some research 555 real estate professionals around the world giving their definitive take on the future of the office um, no massive surprises but really really confirmed what people are saying there's going to be a flight to quality offices people want more healthy buildings there's a real question mark over tired secondary properties and until this week, the UK listed sector, the office, uh, the office sector, had a very, very good run uh, because lots of private equity groups have bought into some of those companies. There has definitely been a bottom found in that world. Um, I also think it was interesting um, that John Lewis has applied for consent to uh, change its London flagship from retail to offices rather than residential. So. Um, you know, the, the, the jury is really, really still out on this one. Um, I, I personally think it would be incredible to expect um, the vast majority of the office-based population to still be at home in a couple of years. Yeah, I think that's interesting. And also John Lewis turning the flagship store, almost half of it, into office space is really interesting. And, and actually mirrors requests for planning in, in July at Westfield in West London to turn the old House of Fraser site there into office space. And it's interesting to see that they're looking at office in both of these 
um, occasions in, instead of looking towards luxury residential, for example. Um, I, I thought that was interesting. Paul, you, you wanted to pick up a little bit on some of the, um, the, the logistic deals that have been happening. Yes, uh, logistics seems to be one of the more resilient sectors and every week's a big big week for logistics at the moment as investors take advantage of the fact that it's the sector that enables e-commerce to thrive and that e-commerce supposedly requires three times the logistics space as conventional retail. But this week has really uh, emphasised how strong the sector is. Carlyle Group announced that it has acquired a, a portfolio of 27 logistics assets in France and Germany for the 540 million euro Carlyle Europe Realty Fund. That portfolio is focused on parcel delivery as 158,000 square metres of it and uh, just over half of it in France. Then Prologist announced the completion of its um, sale, a deal agreed and publicised a while ago, but the completion of it, uh, of a portfolio of buildings and land in the UK uh, to uh, it's been sold to real estate funds managed by Blackstone and it's been sold for £473 million. And, and that sale is the largest disposal of logistics real estate assets ever recorded in the UK. And then in Germany, P3 Logistics Parks is uh, as an asset going to acquire a portfolio of retail logistics property, a matrix portfolio in urban locations, all of the, the main cities, Berlin, Dortmund, Nuremberg, Hamburg, Hanover, Cologne, Dresden, Leipzig, that portfolio has 650,000 square meters of space. It's expected to close in the fourth quarter of the year. It's the second major deal for uh, the acquisition deal for P3 in 12 months. Um, in December, it bought the Maximus portfolio from Apollo Global Management, which is indicative of its switch from more organic growth of its pre-GIC days to scaling up by portfolio acquisition. Another announcement that's, that was in, indicative of the more widespread change in the market is Mayor Bergman rebranding as Mark. The company currently manages gross assets of 7.2 billion, including 4.3 billion of residential property and a billion of offices. Uh, the company has previously been strongly associated with retail, but stresses that it's acquired its last pure play retail asset in 2014. Um, and it's announced that it's expanding its multi-platform strategy by uh, targeting new alternative real estate opportunities. In May, the firm launched Crossbay, which is says is Europe's first last mile logistics platform focused on single tenant distribution centers near gateway cities. Among the new areas of focus, Mark will increase its exposure to residential with new country specific platforms. Um, and it'll exp it's also expanding into life sciences and digital real estate. According to, to Colliers, Germany's top eight industrial and logistics markets uh, generated roughly 2 million square meters in take up in the first nine months of 2020 which is up on previous year's results by 8%. So um, it's um, it, indicative of continued strength in logistics and especially in Germany. Yeah, and I saw, Giles, that Seagro were, were in the news a little bit this week as well. Yeah, well, David Sleeth, the chief exec, um, wrote a really interesting piece for Estates Gazette yesterday for something else which is in the news, which is the UK government's planning for the future consultation, which is really um, revolves around the creation of, of new planning zones, three zones with different levels of, of approval. The trouble is there is no mention of commercial property in this consultation, let alone warehouse or industrial property. There's very, very little mention of, uh, of jobs. And David's point is that the warehouse and logistics world really, really came of age during the pandemic and that this consultation just doesn't take any heed of that or the need for zoning for warehouse or logistics use um, to sit alongside and amongst um, in, um, residential uses. It's, it's a really stark, stark reminder um, of how the government can quite often just forget the commercial property world exists. Thanks very much, Nicole. Thank you, Giles. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for joining us um, and uh, look forward to seeing you again next week for our roundup of the week in real assets. Thank you. Thank you.